everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Mass Bias Town Hall. I am Pam Randava, founder and CEO of Empirical and vice chair of Mass Bias Board of Directors. I'm here today for a conversation with Mass Bias new leadership team, Kendall Berlin O'Connell, our president and chief operating officer, and Joe Bancori, our new CEO. I am going to discuss today what's next for the organization and how we will continue its success through 2022 and beyond. Kendall and Joe, thank you for joining us today. Before we begin today's conversation, I would like to remind you uh, that you can submit the Q&A in the box uh, on the right side. And, um, and to start things off, Joe, for those who don't know you, please introduce yourself and tell us about why you were interested in this role and, and love to hear your story. Thank you, Penn. <clears throat> and I'm so excited to be in this new role and serving alongside uh, Kendall as a new leadership team for MassBio. I come to this role having previously served in the Massachusetts State Senate for about six years. Uh, there I represented in part uh, the MIT Kendall uh, area of the Commonwealth and became intimately involved and aware of the life science industry. Uh, I was chair of the Life Science Caucus in the Senate um, and led on some of the polity initiatives that the legislature was taking in and around this industry. So as the, my predecessor, I come to this role from government, but also as my predecessor, I come to this role as a patient advocate. In 2019, uh, my wife gave birth to our twin boys, uh, John and Philip. Um, John and Philip were born at 25 weeks. Um, they weighed a, a 0.9 and 1.1 pounds, uh, respectively. Um, and for the first time in my life, um, I was dealing with two children uh, who had severe unmet medical needs. We spent more than four and a half months in the NICU. And I really had a front row seat to the cutting edge medical technology that this industry was driving. If my sons were born in any other state in the country, the outcome could have been very different but we were fortunate enough uh, to be in Massachusetts uh, and experience the hope um, and the deliverables that this industry um, kind of delivers for so many patients. Um, last week, we just celebrated their second birthday. Um, so it just really, it felt right to me. It was the right time. You know, we get in work as, uh, into this work as elected officials uh, to have an impact on people's lives. And having gone through the experience I went through over the last two years, um, I saw this as an opportunity to have an, ex to have an impact on so many other patients' lives, uh, to see to it that their unmet medical needs are met. And just being a part of that process and a part of that advocacy for patients ev everywhere um, has been such a great experience in the short time I've been here. Thank you, Joe. Uh, it's been over a month since you've been here on this role. And what your priorities, top priorities have been as a new CEO of MassBio? Well, with the current political climate and the ongoing uh, debate in Washington, DC, my efforts have been focused in large part in this past month on meeting again and reintroducing myself to the Massachusetts federal delegation uh, and having the discussions around uh, what's happening with HR3, the reconciliation bill, and other issues like the orphan drug, drug tax credit, uh, and reminding our federal de delegation um, kind of the harmful impacts uh, that la that legislation um, could have. And, and being at the table and being able to offer what I see is and what MathBio sees is um, kind of policy solutions uh, to count counteract some of the things that are going on. I mean, you know, we need to really reinforce it throughout the pandemic um, for the first time you know, everyone was a patient. For the first time in about a century, everyone is a patient. Everyone had that unmet medical need. And really the globe turned to this industry for the solution. Uh, and we delivered in a big way. Right here in Massachusetts, 95 Massachusetts companies uh, had a role in developing a diagnostic, a therapeutic, and ultimately the vaccines uh, to, you know, combat COVID-19. Um, and telling that it's a great story that we were able to deliver when a when a whole world was looking towards um, our industry, uh, we delivered. And it's a story that I think it's really incumbent on me and everyone else in this industry, industry to keep telling uh, and reminding policymakers from Beacon Hill to Capitol Hill uh, of the harmful impacts uh, that WARI legislation uh, can have on emerging biotechnology companies uh, in our cluster and beyond. 
Well, Joe, you know, it is a proud moment for us that how our industry actually handled, uh, you know, the pandemic that that came to us and uh, how everybody sort of collectively worked together and MassBio played a very pivotal role. And, uh, and you know, given that your personal story uh, with your children and your experience and many countless other families that have also gone through and benefited from the technologies and, and uh, uh, you know, services that has been uh, brought by our industry. Um, and MassBio, again, has, you know, sort of catalyzed, you know, how we support our membership and how we support our ecosystem. Um, you and Kendall both, um, as a new leadership team, uh, you know, I am really interested in, in sort of having our audience understand uh, how you two will work together and, and how we will continue to grow the organization and support our industry. Well, I can say I'm so excited to work alongside Kendall on this partnership to lead MassBio forward. Uh, Kendall brings a tremendous amount of institutional um, experience and knowledge around uh, MassBio, but two, she brings a bold vision for the future. And it's a vision I'm happy to be part of. Um, really, I'm so excited to get to work on some kind of targeting some of the specific um, things that are threatening um, our ecosystem and our industry here in Massachusetts. Uh, talking about issues that we need to face as an industry uh, like housing and infrastructure and workforce issues that are top of mind for every one of our member companies. Um, in my role, uh, I will be ensuring that policymakers in the state house um, are considering what MassBio is saying. Uh, prior to, you know, as I was a state senator, I served as chair of the housing uh, committee as well as more recently the transportation committee. Um, so I feel I can bring policy solutions uh, that have this industry's interests at heart uh, and make sure that this industry has a seat at the table uh, when policymakers are making decisions that are gonna affect uh, our ecosystem here. Thank you, Joe. And, and it's great that you and Kendall really bring this powerful complementary skill set and expertise. So Kendall, can you give us a little bit of a view of, of your how you envision working together as a new lead leadership team with Joe? Absolutely, Pam. And, and on behalf of the team here, we're so thrilled to have Joe on board. He is the right person to help lead Mass Bio into this next exciting chapter. And, you know, Pam, one of the things that we pride ourselves on here at Mass Bio is we are, uh, you try to be a very nimble uh, organization. We try to be responsive to the feedback and the needs of our member organizations. And of course, you know, we continue to uh, scale and evolve our programs and services. And two of those programs that we're really focused on right now that are so important to our members are our DEI initiatives. We're a leader as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the life sciences. And we are here to serve our members and ensure that they have the tools and resources to integrate DEI into their company model at whatever stage of the pipeline they're at. So we're, um, we've doubled down our efforts there and we have two new senior directors of diversity and inclusion, right? To continue to help our members integrate, but we'll also be offering next year um, a consultative uh, uh, approach, right? So Ross, who's new on a board, he'll help you take your DNI initiative to the next level. So stay tuned for more information about that. And I'm also so thrilled as we're thinking about next year, how do we continue to grow and expand our innovation services offerings? And, um, you know, this earlier this uh, fall, we welcomed a new vice president of innovation services, Gary Nair, uh, to the team to help lead that evolution of innovation services programs. Well, thank you, Kendall. This is this is really a great news specifically. Congratulations on those two new directors. I am really <laughs> forward to working with them and seeing the exciting you know, opportunities that we currently have in the industry to support with relation to DE&I. And, and I think that uh, we have a, a really great future on that. And, and you know, thank you, MassBio, for, for really leading that charge. I think uh, MassBio as an organization uh, have really integrated DNI at every stage of the company and every aspect of the company. And so congratulations on that. So 
I also would like to talk about, you mentioned about the innovation services um, and mass bio drive. Uh, could you give us a little bit of a view on the innovation services, and then we will move on to, uh, you know, our purchasing consortium and mass edge. Absolutely. I'm so excited about what we've got going on around innovation services. We know it's such an important program for our emerging biotech ecosystem here. And it's truly a differentiator that Mass Bio offers from so many other organizations. So next year, we'll continue to host our Pharma Days and our partnering weeks. We had a Pharma Day earlier this week and it was great to feel the buzz and excitement happening here in the Mass Bio Hub with so many entrepreneurs back in our building. So we'll plan to continue to have a packed calendar next year. And you know, for those who aren't familiar with our Pharma Days, we launched that program in 2010. And it's really about connecting our leading biopharmaceutical companies with our early stage startups and academia. In the ten, uh, since 2010, we've made more than a thousand connections through our uh, Pharma Day programs. It's so exciting. So stay tuned for that next year. But what I'm most excited about, Pam, is we will be um, later today, a press release will come out. We will be relaunching our Mass Connect program. This into a next generation biotech accelerator called Mass Bio Drive. So for those, again, who um, aren't familiar, MassConnect uh, was one of the country's first entrepreneurial mentorship programs. And over this past year, the team has really worked to think about how do we evolve that program to meet the growing needs of our member community. And so um, Mass Bio Drive will be, again, a, an accelerator program. In 2022, it'll feature two cohorts. Um, there will be a formal application process and early stage entrepreneurs and companies can apply. They'll be subject to a very rigorous vetting process. Um, and those companies that are selected to participate will go through an eight week cycle, six weeks of curated curriculum from uh, industry leading experts. And then they'll be paired um, with a hand curated group of mentors. And then they'll get first access to our partnering week program. So it's something that we're so excited about. If you're interested in learning more, um, please check out the Mass Bio website. And in November, we'll be hosting an event uh, with a deeper dive um, about Mass Bio Drive and more information to come. That's very exciting, um, Kendall. I, uh, as an entrepreneur myself, um, you know, the benefit that the early stage companies can have from the expertise of, you know, advisors and mentors that come through through MassBio, I think it's invaluable. It's really invaluable to taking, you know, the concept to the next level. And, and, and I am very excited about the program. And I know that uh, the team will work very hard to ensure uh, that the companies that are participating in the program are successful. Um, building on that theme, of really supporting the ecosystem, whether you're a large or a small company, um, we have another premier program, uh, which is the, the, the purchasing consortium. Um, we as a company have benefited, many, many companies have benefited from this purchasing consortium, which is called the Mass Bio Edge. Um, could you please discuss a little bit about the program and how we will continue to evolve um, to meet the needs of our members? Pam, this is one of the programs that means the most to me because when I started here at Mass Bio 13 years ago, this is where I started. I was the director of purchasing. So to think how this program has grown and expanded, and actually I should note for those that don't know a little history here, but when Mass Bio was founded in 1985, at the core, there were two objectives. One, policy related, and, and Joe's got that coming. Uh, for us in the future, but the other was around the purchasing consortium and aggregating their spending power. We now have over 25 premier suppliers through our purchasing consortium. And what was so exciting to announce to our community was we just recently uh, signed a 10 year extension with Thermo Fisher Scientific, one of our largest um, partners as it relates to the Mass Bio Edge. And what that means for the members is over these 10 years, we are gonna be able to save our members $4 billion 
through this program. When you think about that number, it's staggering, but it's true. Every year, our members are saving over $250 million through our uh, EDGE agreements. In addition to our premier suppliers, we also, through our connector, have over 100 offerings for our members to take advantage of at both the company level and the individual employee level. So if you haven't checked that out, please go to the MassBio website and look up the, uh, the Edge Connector for more information. We also have the Edge Benefits Program, and that's where employee, uh, companies can take advantage of employee health benefits with Harvard Pilgrim and The Guardian, and also commercial liability through the Hartford. So, so much that we have to offer our members. The other thing I wanna mention, cause I talked about the importance of DE&I, through our um, EDGE program, we work with our members to ensure they have access to diverse suppliers and we make it really easy for them. So if that's something that your company is interested in, please reach out to the team. They can help you take advantage of our um, diverse suppliers through our program. That's incredible. I mean, those numbers, the four billion saving, that that's a quite a large number and remarkable. That again is a testament to the hard work that MassBio team has done and really done things proactively. That's the really is the key here. Um, talking about being proactive, you know, MassBio launched MassBio Hub during the pandemic, and obviously anybody would have thought during a pandemic. A, mass, a hub that's supposed to host these in-person meetings and events and so forth. And it was somewhat concerning at the beginning, uh, but the mass bio didn't even have any kind of a concern and mass bio launched during pandemic and really made a huge success and just shifted how the product and services will be delivered through mass bio hub. Could you please discuss a little bit and tell our audience that what those services are and where they're going to go and what the future holds for Mass Bio Hub? Absolutely, Pam. So you're so right. The Mass Bio Hub, when we had the vision for this facility, it was meant to be a place of collaboration, a place of congregation for our members, really a second home. Come here, hang your hat, meet other members, network. And unfortunately, obviously, we know what happened with COVID, but the team here was able to pivot and to turn the hub into whatever our members needed, right? If you wanted to still have intimate in-person meetings in a COVID-compliant space, the hub had that offering for you and still does. If you want to host a hybrid event, we've had so many um, companies come in and host board meetings here. So there's a hybrid element. Some folks are in person, and then we're able to live stream um, other folks from all over the world. And if companies were looking for a fully virtual offering, the hub is able to provide that to our members as well. As I mentioned earlier, one of the things we pride ourselves on here at MassBio is being nimble and responsive to the needs of our members. And the hub has that offering for whatever you need. So the facility itself can host anywhere from two to 200 people for an event, but we really think that sweet spot is for these intimate strategic business interactions. So things like board meetings, team meetings. Um, if you'd like more information about the hub, please go to hub.massbio.org for more information. The team would be happy to answer any questions that anyone would have. Thank you, Kendall. I mean, that's really exciting and I'm looking forward to uh, really uh, attending events uh, in person, hopefully someday soon um, at Mass Bio Hub. but the team has done incredible work on, in launching these virtual events and they have been quite successful and I hear very positive feedback and I hope everyone checks out uh, the Mass Bio Hub. It's an incredible space and, and the team support that team, it comes from Mass Bio team is also unparalleled. Um, so um, Pam, can I just add one more yes. piece? Yes, please, please. And about the yes. hub for members who don't yes. know. The wonderful thing about the hub is like our edge programs, we've been able to offer this facility at a significantly discounted rate off of what's available in the market. So when you think about other hotels or conference center space, the mass bio hub is anywhere from 25 to 40 percent cheaper off the rates that you would find um, in the market. So I want to make sure members understood that. Thank you, Kendall. So building on that theme, you're here to support the industry, 
and be uh, a player that is there to help. And you, as an industry, we've grown so much. We've had uh, record investment a year. We, we, the, the first you know, quarter and the second quarter, the record investment in, into the biotech uh, and life sciences industry, uh, specifically in Mass, uh, Massachusetts. Uh, we have a major pipeline. You know, we, we, we sort of account for like 7% of the global you know, pipeline in terms of the products. And we have about 14% of the US pipeline. Uh, we have been growing leaps and bounds, uh, both from a pipeline perspective, a company creation perspective, and investment perspective. So basically, we're growing from every angle. That also poses opportunities, which is in the talent area. So we're going to have a major talent gap in the next three years. And what is the role that Mass Bio is playing and supporting that industry? to close that talent gap. Yeah, so so thank you, Pam. We know, and if, and if you haven't seen it already, we released our industry snapshot. So as Pam mentioned, the data is incredible. The, in, the growth that we're seeing, the investment activity that we're seeing, we know that 2020 was a record-breaking year as it related to investment in the life sciences, right? $5.3 billion of venture investment last year. And just this, that momentum is continuing into this year, right? Just the first quarter of this year alone, $4.3 billion of venture investment coming into these early stage companies. It's so exciting. And so what's happening because of that is, as Pam mentioned, this incredible development activity. So over the last you know, 10 years, there's been 21 million square feet of lab and manufacturing space built. We're seeing that in the next four to five years, another 20 million square feet of lab and manufacturing space will be built. What does that mean for our industry? It means that that's, there's going to be a need for at least 40,000 net new life sciences jobs. It's a very critical focus of the industry. And MassBio is uh, taking a leading position around this workforce talent gap that we're facing. Um, and Joe will be able to talk a little bit about that. And we're working with our key partners and stakeholders around this issue every single day. Our friends at Mass Life Science Center, we have daily conversations about this. I think there's opportunity associated with this, Pam. It's going to offer us an opportunity to regionalize, to, to bring life sciences to all areas of the Commonwealth, to communities that have historically been underrepresented in the life sciences. It's going to offer us the opportunity to diversify the industry. Um, and it, what we're going to need to do is make sure that we're educating students at all levels, K through 12. We're working in partnership with vocational schools, community colleges, apprenticeship programs like the wonderful apprenticeship programs that, that our friends at Mass um, Bioed are running. So we're working with everybody to facilitate a solution for this 40,000 net new jobs. Joe, you want to add a little bit more to that? Yeah, thank you, Kendall. If I may, Pam, um, you know, additionally to everything that Kendall has just mentioned, uh, workforce development, this issue is at the forefront of our minds here at MassBio. It's deeply ingrained in all the policy decisions, you know, we're offering the policy solutions we're offering uh, as we talk to policymakers, you know, at the state level uh, and at the federal level. You know, as Kendall has alluded to, you know, as a membership organization, uh, we pride ourselves on being nimble and being attuned to what the needs of what our, our members are. We know to develop a workforce, we face challenges in this commonwealth. You know, we know that housing, you know, transportation infrastructure um, and, and other issues are really causing uh, problems for our companies and really the industry's ability to retain and recruit talent uh, to Massachusetts. So I'm really looking forward to having conversations uh, with our partners in government at every level, from the municipal level to the state level, to the federal level to ensure that we're worrying about, you know, the policies around this industry, uh, whether it's workforce development, transportation, uh, housing, uh, these issues. We want to worry about those issues so our member companies can worry about and concentrate on the incredible work they do every day on behalf of patients everywhere. 
patients like my sons. Uh, that's what we want our members to be concentrating on, delivering cures that are going to, you know, make this world healthier and, you know, make everyone in it, give them the ability to leave, live a quality of life. Absolutely. At the end of the day, Joe, you know, this is what we're all looking for, is delivering the cures and, and, and support for patients so they could have a quality of life. I think that's what the sort of the foundation of our industry. So I wanna go back a little bit around the housing and, and transportation, you know, Cambridge, Boston uh, and surrounding sort of the areas. Um, it's expensive, it's, uh, you know, difficult to get in and out. Um, can you comment a little bit about our strategy is moving sort of a little bit beyond and, and how we make that happen uh, where we can have uh, more affordable housing and um, you know, we can sort of reduce the, the challenge around the transportation. No, you know, Pam, I think you stated it well, you know, Massachusetts has some of the highest cost of living uh, in the entire country. And you know, when you think about transportation, Greater Boston is the number one congested region in the entire country. And while we'd like to see our Red Sox be number one, we don't want to be number one when, we, when we're talking about congestion. Uh, but I think the, you know, the answer there is, you know, we celebrate and we have celebrated for so long the, the cluster in Cambridge and Boston. Uh, but I think that what's next um, and what MassBio is focused on next is really a regional approach. You know, we need to get outside of this cluster uh, and look towards uh, the development happening in Worcester and Waltham and Watertown. Um, you know, because housing costs as you move, you know, west in this state, uh, they go down significantly. Congestion problems go down significantly. And people want to live close to where they work. Um, so if we can have industry out there and clusters popping up, uh, giving people the opportunity to have an incredible career uh, in this industry but also have a quality of life where, you know, they're not worried about leaving work, you know, an hour and a half before they have to be there. And they're not worrying about, you know, having uh, their rent be too high or, you know, not having the opportunity for home ownership. Um, so, you know, I think the net, what's next for this industry uh, in this Commonwealth is expansion and regionalization. I think that's that's a really overdue for a long period of time, and I'm really happy to hear, Joe, you bringing that background and uh, and and that network really to make sure that we are able to accommodate and we're able to continue to meet the needs of this growing industry. You know, talking about growth, uh, we have record number of. Uh, products that are moving from phase one to phase two and three, um, you know, over 400 and uh, 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 therapeutics in, in, in the pipeline. Um, so I want you to discuss both you and Kendall a little bit about, you know, how do we support that sort of the next stage of these companies uh, moving from, uh, you know, sort of an early stage to uh, perhaps the growth stage and, and what kind of support that we can provide to ensure uh, they're staying in Massachusetts, and, and they're not moving to other locations in terms of like manuf manuf uh, 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 biomanufacturing to, uh, to commercialization and so forth. Do you want to take a stab at this, Joe? And we, <laughs> yeah, sure. we know that manufacturing is the next chapter of life sciences. So it's a focus that, again, Joe and I are talking about every day. Joe, you want to add a little bit here? And it's about partnerships. It's about the yeah. leadership partnership here at MassBio, extending that to partnerships, you know, at every level of government and municipalities who have the want and have the desire uh, to develop the next bio manufacturing site. You know, we want to be able to be partners with them and show them and give them the tools and the toolbox that they need to be successful. Because um, when when those small communities win or communities that never had bio before win, I think we all win as an industry and as an ecosystem. Yeah, and Pam, yeah. I'll just add, I mean, keeping that, um, you know, that scaling, that manufacturing work here in Massachusetts makes so much sense for these companies. When you think about proximity to their R&D, they can be almost anywhere here in Massachusetts and be within two hours of their research team, which is, I mean, you can't do that anywhere else. We've got, we know we've got the talent. We've always been able to pride ourselves on the best and brightest. And that's where this goes back to what Joe was talking about, <clears throat> bringing this expansion of 
manufacturing into different communities throughout the Commonwealth. Think about the North Shore, think about out in Worcester. There's incredible opportunity out in Worcester. And so it's something that we're working with all of our key stakeholders to think about and to encourage these companies as they're growing, as they're scaling, stay here in Massachusetts and we'll work with our partners to help you do that. So, you know, there, there's a one more sort of aspect of this, uh, you know, next stage of the growth of these companies is, you know, clinical research. We have the, the, the best academic research cent- centers here and, you know, MassBio has been working closely with them. And what is that next step? to bring that into our community, bring that aspect, the the clinical research that happens at these uh, centers and bring them together to really prepare for the future growth. Yeah, Pam, I think that's where our suite of offerings through innovation services comes in, right? We pride ourselves on being a convener for all of these key stakeholders. And that's what those programs are about. It's about supporting these companies from throughout every uh, stage of their growth trajectory. And so that's what um, Gari, our new vice president of innovation services is really focused on. And she's um, got wonderful relationships with tech transfer and academia. And that's something that the team will be continue to uh, be very focused on in the future. Well, future is exciting and bright for mass bio and our industry. So that's all the time we have today, unfortunately. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and thank you, Kendall and Joe, uh, for our discussion today. It was lively and exciting to hear all different uh, opportunities that MassBio is uh, pursuing. Um, So be sure to visit MassBio.org for all our upcoming events, and most importantly, our Next event, premier event, uh, is Digital Health Impact, which is on November 4th. I hope you join us. Thank you again. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks, Pam. Thank you, Pam. Thank you.